A very warm welcome to our viewers. Uh, Kuwait Television is honored to present an exclusive interview with the President of uh, Croatia, Kolinda Grabar Kitarovic. Uh, Excellency, a very warm welcome to you in Kuwait. Uh, you have had a very, very busy two days already. Yesterday, you received the most prestigious uh, Kuwaiti award from His Highness the Emir, Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed, uh, the Order of Mubarak Al Kabir. Uh, in recognition of Kuwait, Croatia's support to Kuwait. And in return, His Highness the Emirates received from you the most prestigious state order of Croatia, the Grand Order of King uh, Tomislav. Can you please explain to us uh, th this prestigious award? Well, this prestigious award is given only to heads of state, and of course the heads of state whom we value as um, friends uh, of Croatia and whom we value also as um, uh, peacemakers and uh, as uh, constructive uh, citizens in, of the world in terms of bringing mutual tolerance, stability and peace, uh, not just to our own areas, uh, but looking at global peace and uh, global achievements. And of course, it also signif uh, it's significant in terms of friendship between our two countries. And King Tomislav was uh, one of, it was, he was the first Croatian king, not the Cro first Croatian ruler, but uh, uh, back in the Middle Ages when Croatia used to be an independent state before uh, we lost our independence to different monarchies and then regained it back in the early 90s. Um, Excellency, yesterday you have also had uh, some uh, very important meeting, meetings, including with uh, the First Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister, Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid Sabah. Uh, during a meeting, I believe uh, uh, a visa waiver was uh, signed. Can you explain to us? Uh, it, what we signed was the visa waiver on the diplomatic and service passports. Uh, now, Croatia, as a member country of the European Union, will support Kuwait as a friend in your own uh, um, requirements and in your own desire to have uh, a, a visa waiver regime with the European Union. And I hope also that the Croatian citizens uh, will, um, just like the other citizens of the other European countries, uh, be able to receive visas to enter uh, Kuwait at the border and not uh, via the embassy, uh, especially since the embassy uh, is still now uh, in Prague. Uh, so the ambassador in Prague is co-credited to Croatia. And I hope that after today's uh, wonderful event that we've opened a residential embassy here in Kuwait, that Kuwait will open one in Zagreb as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is one of the main uh, purposes of your visit, is to officially inaugurate the embassy. Yes. Uh, however, of course, it's uh, also the official visit to Kuwait, mm -hmm. not just opening the embassy, but really starting a new chapter in our relationship. I am the first head of state from Croatia who is now visiting Kuwait mm -hmm. for the first time, and uh, not the last time, certainly. And uh, what is very important for me, of course, is to bring about uh, more understanding between our two countries, but also to develop our economic relationship, uh, trade and investment, which is really modest at the time, and hopefully to attract more tourists from Kuwait to Croatia. You've had uh, some important meetings as well yesterday with uh, the Speaker of the National Assembly. Yes, uh, with uh, His Excellency the Speaker, but also a number of ministers, and of course His Highness the Prime Minister, and His Highness the Emir. Uh, all of those meetings were really very constructive. For the two days that I've been here, I've really felt at home, very welcome. And um, uh, the meetings uh, are important uh, especially in terms of the specific concrete terms that we agreed upon. I think that in the future, uh, prior to um, the, the planned visit of our Prime Minister to Kuwait, and I've also extended an invitation to His Highness the Emir to visit Croatia. Uh, in the meantime, we will be working on a number of agreement that should, uh, agreements that should facilitate uh, especially investment and trade mm -hmm. between our countries. Um, with me, there are a number of companies from Croatia who are interested in doing business here in Kuwait. Um, we have an excellent shipbuilding sector, uh, capable of um, um, building ships. That the projects are really accommodated to the needs of those who are ordering the ships. Uh, we have um, an excellent defense industry. 
from the protective gear, the Kevlar hel helmets and vests, to uh, weapons, small weapons, uh, rifles, and assault uh, rifles, but also um, the um, M84 tanks that you mm -hmm. have in Kuwait have actually been produced by a Croatian company, Juro Djakovic, and now they're interested in producing armored vehicles for um, the Kuwaiti uh, armed forces. Uh, they are an excellent company, and I'm um, certain that Kuwait uh, will be very happy with the businesses that will be developed between our uh, two countries. And uh, there is another aspect that sometimes is uh, not looked at very closely, but I think is very interesting, uh, is the um, um, agriculture and food processing mm -hmm. industry. Uh, Croatia is becoming not only a halal uh, friendly destination, tourist destination. We have halal certified tourist agencies, restaurants, hotels, etc. But we also have a number of companies that produce uh, food that is halal certified and that can be exported here to Kuwait, especially when it comes to uh, um, fresh fruit and vegetables, but also products from uh, um, the, um, the fruit and vegetables the processed uh, food and uh, meat, especially chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Excellency, you spoke about two main elements. First, business ties. Uh, how, what do you have to say to business, Kuwaiti investors? Uh, what do you have to say to them in terms of, uh, you know, how can you uh, attract them to invest in Croatia? Are the policies, uh, let's say, uh, Ease, ease of uh, you know welcoming and easy to to deal with the laws and regulations of Cro well certainly Croatia is open for business uh, and uh, the government uh, is now taking uh, undertaking a lot of measures from the tax reform mm -hmm. uh, to other measures to attract investment uh, Croatia is a beautiful it's a safe country a, a member country of the European Union and NATO so we have the stability of institutions and of the um, judiciary system. Um, we have very friendly and open-minded people, and we are an open society. Uh, one of the important aspects of uh, the talks that, we, that I held with uh, your leadership and your officials was also um, on Islam, uh, the values of Islam, as uh, Croatia has a relatively small, about 8% of our uh, population are Muslim. Um, however, a very stable uh, Islamic community that uh, I believe is an example of uh, what our Mufti, who by, by the way is here with me on this visit, mm -hmm. of what he said is not uh, coexistence with others, but true existence, mm -hmm. life uh, in the country, being completely integrated, not assimilated, but integrated uh, in the mainstream life. And um, when I remember the time of the Homeland War, which was the war of defending uh, and liberating Croatia in the early 90s, uh, a lot of um, um, defenders were of Muslim faith. Of, uh, 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 and uh, uh, I believe that even when you look at per capita, um, the highest per capita number were um, Muslim fighters in Croatia who were defending Croatia together uh, with uh, Croats, with uh, Christians and others. So the, uh, uh, and the, the value that they bring, not just to the multicultural fiber of society, but really we, through uh, life, through work, through their values, and through investing into Croatia, their energy and uh, their um, good um, spirit, is helping Croatia prosper more. Well, I guess this is also good news for Kuwaiti tourists. I mean, what message do you have for the Kuwaiti? You know, Kuwaitis, they love to travel, especially in the yes. summer. And I know Croatia is the, the, the country of more than a thousand islands, I believe. Yes. You have uh, some of the most beautiful scenic uh, places in the world. I'm advertising. I'm advertising. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I mean, <laughs> what you said is yeah. wonderful. And, uh, you know, what, my message to the Kuwaiti people would be you, you'll always be welcome in Croatia. I believe you will feel at home in Croatia. Yes, we have uh, more than uh, 1,260 something islands. Uh, some of them are completely deserted, so you can have your privacy wherever you go. The Adriatic Sea is beautiful, it's clean, it's safe. It's a bit colder than mm -hmm. the Gulf, but it's wonderful for sailing. Uh, wonderful cuisine, uh, culture, lots of cultural monuments, lots of history. 
uh, Croatia was actually at the crossroads of civilizations of different faiths and different nationalities colliding in the region. That's why we had a turbulent history. But that has also left um, its mark in the fact that, yes, we do understand other cultures and we try to make everyone feel at home in Croatia. Excellent. Uh, Excellency, as you know, Kuwait has recently, we'll change subjects a little bit, but Kuwait has recently inaugurated a regional office for NATO, the yes. North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And with Croatia as a member of NATO, how important is this office uh, in this part of the world and what do you see its main role? In? I am really pleased that um, um, Secretary General of NATO, Mr. Stoltenberg, opened the office just recently here in Kuwait. Uh, I used to work for NATO myself. I used to be Assistant Secretary General for Public Diplomacy, so I'm quite familiar with uh, the cooperation between NATO and the Istanbul Cooperation Initiative. Uh, I think it's very important for NATO to be here, to be present. Of course, NATO is basically a regional organization. It's a transatlantic organization. However, um, we're all very much interested in peace and stability and prosperity in other parts of the world. And it's wonderful to have partners such as Kuwait and other members of the Istanbul Cooperation Initiative uh, to work together with us to uh, prevent from the threats that we see in different parts of the world affect um, our own societies. Because the threats, uh, the new threats are now, they're, they're global, they're asymmetric, and they require uh, more cooperation between um, all of us, uh, among all of us, in order to be able to counter them efficiently. You believe it will help maybe a little bit in the fight against... Uh, I believe so, extremism. certainly. Uh, and it will help in uh, bringing about more understanding uh, between nations and uh, uh, understanding of what NATO does by people in Kuwait and in other Gulf countries. Excellency, as a member of EU, Croatia, uh, what is Croatia's opinion on Brexit? Uh, United Kingdom. Of course, we were not very happy with the results of the referendum, but we fully respect the desire of um, the people of the United Kingdom um, to um, take their decision. Um, the European Union is uh, a democratic union of democratic nations and that respects the will of the people, so we have to respect the will of the majority of the British citizens. I don't think that um, Croatia itself will be very much uh, affected by Brexit. What I am concerned about is that we see um, in the European Union that there, there is that, that the EU has been a little bit shaken in terms of looking at the real values of uh, the EU, which was uh, basically a peace process to prevent another war uh, on the European soil ever happening again. Uh, it was solidarity. It was uh, human rights. It was bringing the nations together. And I'm a bit concerned that a number of nations are, have started to close in and that we are now facing the choice, all of us, between an open and a, and a closed society. And we certainly want to uh, stay an open society. And we want for the EU to have perhaps not more Europe, but a better Europe, that we stay interconnected, that the borders um, are not marked again on the ground. Um, as um, the, the recent events of raising fences and um, um, abolishing or, or suspending some parts of the Schengen system of the freedom of movement do uh, concern me and I hope that the situation will stabilize, that we will look at ways how to communicate more with our people, with our citizens and defend the value of the European project because a lot of them a lot of our citizens have forgotten the times of divisions and the times of war. Um, we in Croatia did not, uh, at least those of us who lived through the war in the 90s. So we know exactly why we need the European Union and why we need freedom and peace and respect for human rights. Excellency, I know you're in a rush. You have a flight to catch. Uh, maybe one last question, an internal question. You mentioned uh, uh, some of the fences being built, the, the immigrant issue uh, has been a problem for Croatia and other EU countries, neighboring EU countries. Can you tell us about the struggle uh, of the what and what solutions you've... Well, the migrants, of course, um, they, uh, for them, the, Cro uh, the Croatian soil was just um, a transit area. 
uh, as they wanted to move on to other countries uh, in um, the more western parts of Europe, such as Germany, for instance. But uh, Europe just does not have the capability and not the capacity to take in all. And therefore, we have to look at solutions how to resolve the uh, root causes of migrations uh, at their source. So we have to address poverty, illiteracy, inequality, mm -hmm. uh, religious, uh, national, or any other extremism. And we have to provide for the circumstances of human security to every single human being. And this is what we strive for together between Croatia and Kuwait. And this is what we believe can do a lot more together in the context of the United Nations uh, and of the um, uh, sustainable development goals that we uh, adopted in New York and that we now have to put in practice if we want um, to um, not just secure our own societies but really help the people in the world to live in decent uh, conditions that are worthy of a human life. Excellency, it was uh, wonderful listening to you. Uh, any parting words? We give you the last word. You're the special guest. Well, uh, thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to extend my sincere thanks and appreciation to His Highness the Emir, uh, His Highness the Prime Minister, and uh, uh, the leadership of your country and the people of Kuwait for such a warm welcome. Um, as I said in the beginning, we've really felt at home for the past two days, and I'm so much looking forward to continuing our cooperation. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this was uh, an exclusive interview with the President of the Republic of Croatia. Thank you very much for watching.